Then, as though bearing out the fears of the fishermen, the tuna vanish as suddenly as they appear. They seek the refuge of the deep to escape the killers. But even now, the work is not over. The fish are quickly consigned to the quick freeze brine below decks. And we have aboard more than 60 tons of the tastiest meat that ever came from the depths of the ocean. Once the catch is consigned to the hold, the men will have a well-deserved rest. But first, a dinner that matches the Queen Mary, then a lot of conversation about that big one that got away. The calm, starlit night on the tropical sea finds them in various forms of relaxation. Some gather on the boat deck for a musical serenade. Some sit about reading or writing letters home. Still others break the strain by watching one of the films they brought on the trip. Many of the fishermen have strong religious attachments and spend time in the chapel before retiring. More days and more miles as the clipper pushes further south in search of more tuna. The skipper sights some big fellows on the horizon and moves the clipper toward the school. To handle the larger ones, the men fish as a team, two, three, and even four poles on a common line. Even then, it taxes all their strength to pull 150 pounds of fighting fury out of the water. Tuna, called by Zane Gray the tiger of the sea, have a voracious appetite. And they strike like a whirlwind. tons of tuna, and our clipper heads for home. Now on the trip home, a heavy accent again is placed on cleanliness. The clipper is washed down from stem to stern. Every fitting is polished, and all the gear is returned to its rightful place, compactly and securely stored. As our clipper moves back up the line, the seas get heavy. It's always an omen. There's weather ahead. With several hundred tons of tuna aboard, the clipper rides low in the water. Our decks are awash the entire time we're off the coast of Mexico. Finally, after days of being tossed by the storm, we enter San Diego Harbor. Home is the fisherman, home from the sea. The first step in processing and preparing the tuna for the family table is this trip from the deep freeze hold of the clipper. The fish travel by way of a large sluice to the weighing table. Like so many chunks of ice, they are carefully weighed. The trip is then continued as the tuna take their last swim to the huge thawing pens where, immersed in pure salt water, the fish are slowly thawed out. Reduction plant, 
After butchering, the tuna are inspected and racked for cooking. They are racked according to size to ensure proper length of cooking time, which ranges from one to 10 hours at a temperature of 218 degrees Fahrenheit. From the cooker, the tuna is taken to the cooling room where it is left overnight. Another journey takes the tuna to one of the many long rows of cleaning tables where hundreds of white-gowned women take over the important step of cleaning and scraping, leaving only the choice loins for packing. The head, skin, bones, and even the dark meat are consigned to the reduction plant for scientific processing. These experts prepare the loins for the chopper, which cuts them for fancy or chunk-style packs. This piece of precision mechanism is aptly called the guillotine. It fashions morsels of the tender meat for chunk-style packs. New and improved methods of processing and packing are constantly sought for and achieved. And although there's very little margin for error in the precision filling of each can, it is tested for weight before oil is added. Thus, the entire trip from cooker to canning is a matter of minutes. Then, just enough of nature's finest vegetable oils is added to preserve the flavor and the delicate texture of the fish. Like a parade of tin soldiers, the cans move in single file to be capped and sealed at the rate of five per second. These huge baskets are rolled into the giant retorts where the tuna, can and all, is subjected to a temperature of 242 degrees Fahrenheit for 80 minutes. And this one bank of retorts alone is capable of cooking a quarter of a million cans at the same time. After being cooled in these metal baskets, the cans are given a final inspection for weight and for proper vacuum. Then spot checks are made of the meat itself. When the lot has passed final inspection, the cans travel to the unscrambler, which in turn feeds them onto an elevator. Then they are gravity fed into a labeling machine which sends them to the packing cases at 480 a minute. The end of the line, but only in the packing house. Now the tuna, delicious light meat in chunk style or the solid pack, is ready to be shipped by case or carload to the dealer's shelf. And here is the prize of the fisherman, ready to become the most versatile performer in your kitchen. Which will it be, chunk style or solid pack? Which will it be? Well, if you're planning to serve tuna salad, either the solid pack or the chunk style will be just right. Dusty tuna combined with lettuce and spinach or with carrots and beets. Simple to prepare and simply delicious. Let's see what one solid pack can will do. Serve it hot as tuna chop suey. Inexpensive and in addition to its nutritional values, there is that touch of exotic glamour. Serve it cold as a molded tuna salad. Fancy enough for any buffet. To prepare this tuna cream dip, use either the solid pack or chunk style. 
Most people prefer the chunk style combined with a little sour cream, horseradish, and onion salt. Use it in hors d'oeuvres, canopies, breads, and of course, a heaping plate of tuna sandwiches is sure to please. Unless you run out. And for the party on the patio, or for that picnic in the park, don't forget the barbecue style of tuna dishes. The whole sandwich can be wrapped in foil and grilled, or the meat itself can be sizzled to a golden brown. And tuna is now available in a dietetic pack, prepared and canned under the most rigorous scientific control. Its meal-making magic lends itself in a thousand ways to easy-to-prepare, low-cost, elegant meals. So whenever you think of tuna, look for the mermaid on the label. booklet contains recipes for the dishes illustrated in this film and many more. For your copy of Creative Cookery, write to Chicken of the Sea, Post Office Box 2111, Long Beach 1, California. That's Chicken of the Sea, Post Office Box 2111, Long Beach 1, California. <laughs>